at the end of the day, just add grain on top of that. <laughs> and you can say that was the original idea. That's <laughs> a, a little secret. You can... <laughs> it's a creative choice. Got it. <laughs> it's always. Welcome to Made on Mobile TV. My name is Courtney Jones, and I am a full-time filmmaker up here in the Pacific Northwest. Here on Made on Mobile TV, I show you how to make professional movies, commercials, music videos, and series from concept to distribution using your mobile devices. Welcome to episode one, and what better way to kick things off than to talk to the man who sent me spiraling down this rabbit hole of mobile filmmaking, Vadim Chilenko of Beast Grip. I got a chance to talk with Vadim about his incredible gear, filmmaking in general, and I got a chance to do a little bit of an unboxing with him, which is actually kind of special because, well, you'll see. All right, thank you, Vadim Chilenko, for joining me on uh, the Made on Mobile podcast. Uh, I'm really excited to have you as my first guest. Thank you, Courtney. Uh, I'm also excited, and thank you for having me. I, I have a little bit of an issue t uh, to talk to you about. This is all your fault, really. Um, me being such a big uh, uh, proponent of mobile filmmaking. Th this is all because of you. Like five years ago, I, I went to go shoot a, a feature and I was like, you know what? Let me figure out if I can shoot it on my phone. And I saw, and it was because I saw the Beast Grip, the, the original Beast Grip. And so I bought it, loved it then reached out to you and said, Hey, you know, um, I'm doing this, this, this feature. And you sent me the prototype, which I actually can, can, uh, can show you here. Uh, there it is. That is the actual prototype. I don't know if you can see it, but, but, uh, that's the prototype that you sent me. And I have used the hell out of this thing it look at that the the whatever coating that was is starting to come off uh but this thing has served me incredibly well uh what prompted you to actually to, to start this company yeah so i i was trying to get into the uh filmmaking not filmmaking just to you know start shooting some videos and uh, I got a Galaxy S3 phone and I was just kind of surprised what type of quality I could get from that camera. I believe it was the first uh, phone that could shoot 1080p from Samsung and iPhone 4S, I believe, was uh, from Apple. So that's how I basically get into this whole, uh, you know, phonography movement uh, because I wanted to utilize that camera, but of course it comes with a lot of limitations and one of them was actual form factor. So my idea was to create some type of rig so I could use it like more traditional camera to put it on tripod, uh, to add some additional accessories, conversion lenses. So that's basically how I created my first uh, case. And then after that, I had the idea about universal rig and that's how everything started. That's awesome. So uh, necessity being the mother of all invention. So you, uh, so you created this company, you created this gear, um, and it started a, a revolution. Um, that's that's the, the way that I put it, is that you started a, a, a mobile revolution. Um, and so now, uh, now that we have all of this gear, you know, that we can attach to it, you know, we can attach microphones and lights and, you know, and tripods and gimbals and all that stuff. We can attach all of that uh, stuff and then attach it to, you know, a tripod. Um, like what, what do you see are the limitations in iPhone filmmaking? Because they're, they're, they seem to be becoming fewer and fewer. Yeah, and it's exciting times because we all want to get the best quality from our camera, right? And I right. think like uh, right now, smartphones are very like real and legit cameras too. You know, it's not a toy anymore. So a limitation still there. I mean, we still uh, have to deal with small sensor, but we can see what is computational you know, uh, imaging processing, 
doing right now, right? We get in really, really good quality from uh, iPhones particularly. And, um, but I don't know, I mean, with iPhone 11 Pro, I'm really happy <laughs> what this device can do. Maybe low light performance, you know, it could be right. better. Uh, right. Some of the issues with uh, how it's handling exposure, you know, when you lock your exposure, it's still kind of shifting depending on your scene. Uh, but uh, everything looks really good. And I think uh, with next iPhones, we will see even greater improvements. And uh, yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like technology is not getting worse from here. We know that. So um, so hopefully, you know, uh, the, the sensors seem to be getting slightly better you know, slightly larger, um, you know, so that means that we could have, you know, some of the, the coveted things that we're always looking for, you know, better low light performance and better, you know, shout more shallow depth of field. Um, you know, so those things are, are, are coming. Um, you have, uh, you know, so I, I showed off, um, the, the, the prototype, um, but I was really excited, you know, cause I, I, I went and, and purchased, um, a, a bunch of gear, uh, from uh, from the Beast Group website, and uh, and I thought it would be kind of fun to do a little bit of an unboxing with you, you know, here uh, uh, together, you know, because th this stuff is uh, is is pretty amazing. So um, I'm gonna switch over to a uh, to the Beast Cam uh, the the, uh, the the I'm gonna call it the Beast Cam camera <laughs> here we go we have a beast right. cam camera <laughs> <laughs> the beast cam camera that's right so here's here's the this is the beast grip pro this is the new beast grip pro right so uh talk to me about uh, about what that is okay it's a little bit dark yeah so yeah, beast grip gonna... pro uh so that prototype that you have uh basically it's almost the same, <laughs> but we did a lot of uh, improvements over the time because it's what five years since we uh, released the original Beast Grip Pro. Right, here they are. And uh, yeah, so the major changes are in the lens mount assembly. So mm -hmm. basically, a different lens mount. Uh, right now, it has interchangeable plates to adapt to latest iPhones as well as previous iPhones and many Android phones. So there are different plates, di different rubber inserts to make sure the lens alignment is as good as it can be. Uh, then we replaced, you can see we have machined uh, parts for those arms uh, at the lens mount assembly as a way how everything is attached together. So basically it's just much more uh, robust and uh, durable compared to the prototype you have and yeah uh, different yeah. clamps uh, with the rubber over mold so so the, the there's there's something that's that's interesting that I see here on the bottom. Um, this is we're looking at the bottom of the of the rig now. Is that you have the quarter twenty directly now under the lens, which is great. That way, you know when you pan, you're actually doing a nodal pan rather than panning it from, you know, a, a different point over, you know, off to the side. Yeah, yeah. and we added that uh, quarter inch mount because uh, when we introduced depth of field adapter second version MK2, we also released uh, Beast Rail uh, rail right. support for that adapter. So, you know, to make it easy uh, to mount it and to have a proper alignment, that's how you attach that Beast Rail. But at the same time, as you mentioned, now you have centered uh, the lenses on the same axis as your mounting point on your tripod, so your panning is properly made right and, uh, yeah yeah that's awesome so the second uh bit of of kit that i'm i'm really excited about is the actual beast cage talk to me about that the beast cage yeah so beast cage uh it's our dedicated cages uh designed for specific iphone models uh, so we have cages 
to support all of the iPhone models for, starting from iPhone 7. And uh, actually, uh, this latest cages for iPhone 11, 11 Pro and 11 Pro Max have uh, different and I think very unique uh, lens mount interface design. So basically we have a quick release mount to uh, quickly swap the plates and you can utilize all kinds of different lenses. So it's very universal. Yeah, wow, look at this. Look at the, the boxing, it's like, it's like taking a new iPhone out. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's something that's oh look at that that is a beautiful thing and this is this thing is built like a tank what, what is this made out of okay it's a machined aluminum uh with anodized finish we have mechanical buttons to control your power and volume uh yeah we have some rubber padding inside of the cage and on that uh, cover so it's kind of protects your phone a little bit and uh yeah it's tricky. It, it, well, it, it's it's good that it is tricky, so it doesn't just pop out there, huh? So um, that is awesome. So, uh, so talk to me a little bit about this mount because uh, you have a, a, a bunch of different mounts because. Uh, one of the things that I'm doing is I, I'm going to be using your lenses, which, uh, which I'm going to be showing off later, but I also have moment lenses, you know, so I was excited to see that you, uh, you know, were giving a bunch of different mounts like directly in the, uh, in, in the box. Yeah. So, uh, when we, uh, release previous cages, uh, two years ago, we included two different mounts. One is standard 37 millimeter, the same as on Beast Grip Pro. Another one. That's that's this one is uh, what well, this one is the 37 millimeter. Yeah, right, right. yeah, yeah. And then we had another mount for our M series lenses, which is a bayonet mount system. Which is so, this? Uh, this, it's this probably is... a moment. That's moment. Oh, this is the moment lens. Okay. Yeah, our bayonet gotcha. a little bit larger. Uh, gotcha. but similar idea so and then uh, we That's always you know yeah. yeah we always awesome. had those questions from people if it's possible to use moment lenses and it's including beast grip product and beast cages so for this latest models we decided let's include all of the popular lens mount options so if people have own lenses from different brands so they still can use the best iPhone cage out there you know and enjoy uh, all kinds of lenses and mounting options so right that is brilliant so totally modular um, now this thing you know I, I'm not going to show them off right now but I, I got the beast rails and the and the beast handles and you know all of that kind of stuff but uh, so this thing is a total modular system uh, which is, which is one of the things that I, I loved about, uh, about your, your products always anyway, is that, you know, you can adapt it to your style of filmmaking. It, it didn't have to be a particular style of, of filmmaking. It, it could be your style. So, yeah. Yeah. And uh, with beast cages, it's, uh, that's kind of like, first of all, it has smaller footprint compared to beast grip. And but if you want to add handles, you can do that. You know, it's based on standard quarter inch mount all over the, at the top and the bottom of the cage. At the front of the cage, we actually have our custom mount uh, for action handles. So, uh, but you can use any type of uh, handles that has a NATO uh, profile, you know, the clamp oh, wow. can be attached to the NATO rail. Yeah, which I was lucky enough to pick up some of those. That that's awesome. Um, yeah. So this yeah. system is completely modular. It's adaptable to different shooting scenarios, and it's actually easy to uh, balance the cage on a uh, gimbal like DJI uh, Ronin S or similar type of gimbals because it's more compact. It's more dense. You know, the whole weight distribution is a little bit more balanced compared to the Beast Grip Pro. So right. Right. That is fantastic. And I'm, I'm uh, also very excited about what's in this box. Now, this is 
your uh, one of your pro uh, ser- one of your pro series lenses, and uh, uh, this I think is a, a key piece to uh, the the filmmaking experience, uh, at least for me, is that I'm hopefully going to be able to get a little bit more of a shallow depth of field because of this uh, this particular lens. So t- talk to me about that lens. Yeah, so 3X is going to give you about 18 millimeter focal length equivalent on the main camera on your iPhone. Mm-hmm. And it really creates a separation between uh, your subject or object in focus and background and vice versa. So you can achieve that shallow depth of field in much more convenient and easiest way compared to depth of field adapters. Right. It doesn't have that dramatic separation but it creates especially in you know for close-ups and uh, for portraits uh, because first of all you don't have this weird wide angle distortion right when you're trying to shoot somebody and it's like a close-up shot and it creates that separation and a little bit of bokeh and you know shallow depths of field so it's really cool lens you know i wish it a lot of our content with this lens especially when we want to do like tight close-up shots uh, right so yeah and let me tell you man this thing this thing is solid i mean it 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 feels like a lens uh you know twice its size i mean it, it's it's huge <laughs> it's very complex lens actually there is like uh, i believe seven uh, optical elements you know so it's it's very like wow. complex and expensive lens so yeah, so uh, so this one is the wide lens. It's a 0.75 uh, lens. So what what is the effective um, focal length of this? It's about 20 millimeters about 20 on 20 millimeters. iPhones. Yeah. So you basically, yeah. with those conversion lenses, what we're trying to do, we put actual magnification uh, amount. like So you can calculate quickly. You know, you take your focal length, 26 millimeters, and multiply by 0.75. That's how we get your uh, focal lengths with that right. length. All of these things uh, make up uh, a really uh, a, a really interesting system. It's like a full ecosystem, um, but it's so flexible and modular that, um, that you feel like you can do anything. Uh, is there anything that you feel that you're missing right now? Um, I, I guess what you were missing for a while was, you, was a... Uh, uh, an app, but now you have that, right? Yes. So uh, we just released our app. It's still a lot of work <laughs> ahead of yeah, us, yeah. you know, but I think we had a really great start because we did introduce uh, some of the very unique features that there is no other app on the market that has, uh, you know, uh, similar functionalities. So uh, plus we try to create the app that uh, gives uh, proper user interface uh, to control your camera, especially if you utilize in all kinds of uh, gear, lenses, depth of field adapters. Uh, I think there is no other app that can give you that amount of uh, control that you can do as quickly and easy as possible, you know? So that was our main goal, give user a great uh, user interface and just, you know, utilize some of the unique features that iOS platform gives you as a developer uh, in terms of presets and files and, you know, all those things that you can't even find on traditional cameras, so. Right, right. So uh, you're speaking of traditional cameras, like I'm finding it hard to think of a reason to actually use a traditional camera right now. I mean, low light performance is is one reason. Uh, you know, I have an A7S Mark II um, and that thing is a low light beast. Um, but uh, so other than low light and, you know, I, I think- uh, Lenses, yeah, maybe, <laughs> interchangeable yeah, lenses. lenses interchangeable lenses i mean uh, there's almost no reason to uh, to shoot with a dslr now um especially because now you can use your dslr lenses because you have a i don't have one um here but you have a a depth of field adapter that you can attach regular you know canon and other cine lenses uh onto right 
yes, we do have a depth of field adapter and uh, it gives you similar, a similar look, you know, shallow depth of field. It's uh, the quality, it's <laughs> not there compared to, you know, proper DSLR or mirrorless camera, but uh, it's just creates this very, you know, unique and different look uh, with some texture and some softness. So it's a very fun adapter to shoot with, you know, it requires some practice and understanding how that whole system works. Perfect. And specific proper lenses to achieve the best looking results. But once you kind of realize that and know what, what it does and what it can deliver, then it's a very, very nice uh, piece of gear, you know, to shoot yeah. with. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to, to, uh, to check that out because, um, I mean, we all know nowadays that, uh, that, you know, cameras are just computers with lenses attached to them anyway, even your big digital cinema cameras that, you know, an Alexa or a Red or what have you, they're just a computer with a lens attached, you know, so, you know, given that the, the technology is going to get better, not worse, um, uh, I'm, I'm really excited to see what is next. Um, how much of a love or a love-hate relationship do you have with mobile filmmaking? For me, it's all love, you know, but uh, I think a lot of people, they still not kind of realizing what they have in their pockets, you know, and what they can really create with the smartphones. So it's still a lot of, uh, you know, negative uh, feedback going on around, you know, like all of that is like a silly, you know, <laughs> think uh, like gear and lenses, uh, just go ahead and buy a proper camera. That's still a lot of those comments, you know, and, uh, but we can see that some of the very famous filmmakers already utilized smartphones to create beautiful films. And my take is like, you can sit and complain about limitations and about how bad smartphone filmmaking is at the same time somebody is making money <laughs> shooting films on a smartphone or commercials or whatever business corporate videos you know so right. and if we compare the quality of for example iphone 11 pro video today with some of the one of the best dslrs back in the day i think you know there is nothing to compare it to. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's that's one of the things. This this channel is kind of dedicated to um, to not having any more excuses to to make your you know to to make your project right. So uh, it, it, as I keep saying during this time of of uh, COVID, is that I'm using this time period as an excuse to have no more excuses. Right. So I, I was like, OK, I'm going to make a, another feature. This, this will be my fourth feature that I'm getting ready to do. My second on mobile, um, the one that I did the, the first time using your, your original rig um, and the prototype, um, you know, it, it got distribution. You know, it's it's out in the world, you know, and and, you know, yay, that 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 was the point. But my challenge uh, now is to do a whole project on mobile from beginning to end. So I'm writing the script. I'm going to shoot on mobile. I'm doing all the previs. Um, I'm going to do, all, you know, most of the post-production because the, the, uh, the only things I can't do, um, is, is the, the CGI, the, uh, the, the 3d animation that I, that I needed to do. I have a, an animated character that's going to be in there. Um, that that's the only thing that I can't necessarily do right now um, on mobile, but I, so I'm gonna shoot on the phone and uh, and edit on the uh, on the iPad and get it out into the world, and I'm gonna use your gear to to get it all done, uh, and I'm I'm really super excited about that. Um, so uh, kind of moving forward, um, what do what do you want to see you know out of the cameras because you know you touched on the stuff with uh with the iphone you know some of the limitations um some of the frustrations that i'm you know that i'm having you know to to kind of play around with right now trying to work around 
um, are, you know, like the tone mapping issues with the iPhone, you know, because it'll, you know, make the, the exposure kind of, you know, do funny things. Um, uh, you know, I think audio is, is a good thing. Um, you know, the, the lenses are, are, are nice. And then you're with the ad, uh, addition to your lenses is going to look beautiful, I think. Um, but you know, some of the, uh, you know, the limitations, you know, once we get past those, uh, wh- what do you, what do you want to see, uh, coming out of, uh, out of the mobile filmmaking gear? Um, uh, I don't know, if I'm asking about gear, like what, what you've made or just phones, or maybe it's the combination. Uh, so I think sooner or later, the majority of, uh, you know, conversion lenses <laughs> will not be needed anymore because uh, really we can, uh, yeah, I think so because, you know, uh, we can see this uh, trend. So we go into multi-camera setup. Uh, I don't think like, some of the manufacturers did this crazy five or six lenses that you cannot really use, you know, right. It's a good move, but once you keep a proper balance of few uh, lenses and once, uh, finally, you know, let's say iPhone's going to put the same quality sensors in every camera, not just for the main camera. Right. right. Uh, we're going to get a uh, much better performance from telecamera or ultra wide camera so there is still room for anamorphic lenses because i don't think uh somebody gonna put you know anamorphic lens inside of the phone maybe right. <laughs> uh, but uh you know what i would love to see uh it's i th- still think there is room to enlarge like put larger sensor just to improve low light performance and and that's that's happening kind of incrementally you know it, it's slowly coming uh, uh, uh now i think uh, sony's new xperia one mark ii um is has got a little bit bigger sensor um and it's certainly more sensitive i mean that thing from from everything that i've seen so far it looks like it's going to be uh you know if, if not the one to beat then it's at least going to be on par with what you got going on with the with the uh with the iphone okay. yeah so low light performance and larger sensor again uh probably you're going to get better, more shallow depths of field, you know, because of the actual sensor size. And uh, do you remember when Samsung introduced like uh, adjustable aperture on the phone? Mm -hmm. I think it was a great idea. I don't know why they didn't move forward, like, uh, because I believe latest uh, Samsung, they don't have it anymore. And you see with, for example, we get Galaxy S20 Ultra and... uh, it has huge sensor on the main camera. And the problem with that, so you don't have adjustable aperture, so you got really uh, nice shallow depths of field when you need it, but you also have it when you don't need it. And sometimes it's really hard to control focus because of right. that. And another limitation is uh, it doesn't work really well with external lenses. So on that Samsung, you know, some of the lenses, they do not work good at all. You have very funky and blurry images coming out right. just because I think size of the sensor and then uh, it's like fast uh, lens on that phone. Right. Because previous models where you can control aperture, you could close it uh, using Filmic Pro. You can actually, uh, you could have control over that aperture. Then right. external optics did work much better, you know. So I would love to see a larger sensor, but I also hope they're going to, you know, give that aperture control because if not, then all these lenses, they just going <laughs> to, yeah. they'll have to go away because they're not going to work. Right. Oh, right. So, so, uh, so again, you know, wh- one of the missions of this channel is to kind of, you know, to kind of kick the stigma of mobile, you know, not being ready for prime time, because I feel like it is, you feel like it is, you know, and, and uh, uh, so 
just so you know, I'm going to be coming back to you, you know, talking to you more about uh, about this and kind of the state of, of mobile filmmaking, because we're not only doing feature films, but we're going to be doing series as well, which, uh, you know, your gear, I think, is going to be instrumental uh, into doing, you know, series and, uh, you know, any sort of uh, uh, photography, videography. Uh, but uh, I'm really interested to kind of, you know, pull you in on this conversation, you know, about, you know, kind of pushing the, 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 the mobile, uh, the, the mobile filmmaking thing out into the world and just saying, Hey, it, it's as good, if not better in some cases than DSLR, you know, or, or what have you, uh, you know, just, it, it's a great filmmaking, uh, uh, experience. So, you know, let's, let's everybody do it. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I feel like, you know, people have to kind of uh, think about mobile filmmaking uh, or actual cameras on smartphones because people always compare it to something else, you know? It's like if you take GoPro and try to compare it to a red camera. Nobody trying to do that, right? Because GoPro has own, you know... Uh, like strong uh, si sides and uh, the idea behind that camera was action camera, right. small, portable, you know, it can go anywhere. Uh, but with smartphones, it's always like, oh, let's compare it to this camera, you know? Right. <laughs> it's right. like, forget about comparing something, just see what you can do with that. Use it, you know, that's use it as, it as what, what it, is. it is. Yes, because yeah. again, you can always sit and wait. It's like with any gear, you know, when you're trying to buy a new computer, a new uh, phone, or a new camera, you research and research like what is the best right now, but hey, tomorrow is going to be another better camera, you know? You'll, and you'll never be able to keep up with it. Right? <laughs> if you already have it, just use it, you know? Well, you know, there's something that I think you touched on earlier was, you know, like some of the things that were, you know, that, that were missing. Um, and, and it's kind of maybe a niche thing or a niche thing uh, for, for, for people, mostly for filmmakers. But you mentioned anamorphic, right? Um, so you already have an anamorphic that's, that's out uh, on, on the market, and that is uh, 133 um uh one but now you're coming out with one that's uh 1.55 so can, can you do you have that with you can you can you can you show us uh show us something about yeah, that yeah uh, I, I can show you the lens <laughs> yeah so yeah. okay so yeah this one is our current uh, 1.33 and this one is uh, 1.55 so basically they are very similar in terms of like, you know, uh, look and uh, mechanical design and even yeah. optical design. It's pretty much uh, same cylindrical lenses, just uh, different, you know, uh, magnification and squeeze. So, yeah, with 1.55 anamorphic, if you shoot in uh, with uh, 16 by 9 aspect ratio, which is standard for smartphones, you will get uh, 2.76 by one aspect ratio. <laughs> like, so, like your shirt. <laughs> yes. Right. So uh, basically... So that that is true. That's uh, what is, is called uh, ultra panavision? Yes. That that that's all. Yeah. yeah. So uh, Hateful Eight uh, was shot in this format, uh, one of the latest films, and I don't know what else. <laughs> Yeah, I love many, that movie, many, so. many others. I'm, I'm, sure. I'm sure, you know, but that that's kind of a, you know, one of the, you know, coveted aspect ratios, right? That's, uh, you know, that ultra wide, that super, um, super cinematic uh, look, right? Yeah. And uh, what is cool about anamorphic lenses, uh, they give you that ultra wide field of view. However, it's not like uh, with wide angle lenses where you get this wide angle lens distortion where perspective getting, you know, very dramatic. And uh, with anamorphic lens, you actually not changing that perspective. You are not changing your vertical field of view. It's basically you get in much wider uh, horizontal field of view by optical right. squeeze. And when you stretch it out, you get this 
very different look and you know sometimes people say oh i can just add black bars on top at the bottom to get to this aspect ratio you can but i think uh with anamorphic lenses you just you know like you look at something and you see it's different but you can tell what is different but you right. see it's different so that's right. cool thing about anamorphic lenses it has yeah. some distortion you know uh but uh it's also give you those nice lens flares when you're shooting with some uh direct light source right. and with this lens because on our uh 1.33 we have more like a green um, orange tint to those flares it's more mm -hmm. subtle it's not that dramatic with this one we actually decided to go a little bit more like with more dramatic more visible flares uh because i personally love them you know yeah and yeah. again some people like them some people don't but uh, right. yeah this one gonna have a little bit more noticeable flares with more purple and blue color right yeah it's a really fun lens we're going to wrap up here, you know, because I know you've got stuff to do. You know, you, you've uh, been gracious enough to take, you know, take a, a bunch of time out uh, today for us. And I really appreciate it. And I'm sure the audience will as well. Um, so uh, let's let's wrap up by by talking about where people can uh, can see more stuff and hear about more stuff uh, that, that Beast Group is doing? Yeah, so our official website, beastgroup.com, we actually updated our website recently. So now we have Get Inspired page and we have different categories, filmmaking, mobile journalism, uh, like tutorial videos. So I would advise to go ahead and check out uh, filmmaking uh, page because we have some of the projects that uh, were shot with our gear and they're just amazing projects, you know. And uh, our Instagram page, uh, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Uh, yeah, just search Beast Grip and you will find our website. Awesome. Awesome. Well, good. Hey, uh, I'm going to have you back if that's okay. Uh, because I, I really love talking this filmmaking stuff with you and, and, uh, I'm, I'm sure that there's going to be, uh, a, a whole lot more, you know, when the new iPhone 12 comes out and, you know, anytime you release more gear, but, you know, in between, you know, I, I want to, you know, kind of, you know, talk to you, uh, during the making of this feature film that, that we're going to be doing. Um, just, yeah, just to kind of, you know, talk through, you know, if there are any, uh, you know, technical issues or pitfalls or, or anything like that, you know, I just want to, you know, just kind of, you know, talk those things out. And if you, if you don't mind, uh, you know, joining me on that, that would be fantastic. Sure. We're always happy uh, to be involved and provide some technical assistance, you know, because uh, I know every single lens, <laughs> every single piece of equipment that we sell, what is the best, uh, you know, scenario to use, which lens and what rig and what limitations are and i can share i'm happy to share this information so you can get the best possible results great because i know exactly what our next topic is going to be uh because this is a horror movie uh and any horror movie worth its salt is shot at night <laughs> or definitely in, in low light um and i know I'm, I'm walking right into you know one of the biggest you know uh no-go areas you know which is low light uh, videography when it comes to, uh, mobile, but, um, I'm excited to see how I can push it, um, and, and, uh, and see what, what can be done. At the end of the day, just add grain on top of that. <laughs> and you can say that was the original idea. <laughs> it was a That's a little secret. You can... <laughs> it's a creative choice. Got it. <laughs> it's always right right well cool hey buddy again really appreciate your time thank you so much and uh i'll be talking to you soon thank you Carl. that's it for me today i'd really like to thank vadim chilenko for coming on and talking to me about his great gear uh it's gear that i actually use and this is not a sponsored uh segment or anything like that but uh I'd, I'd really like to thank it because you know without his gear i don't think that i would have been motivated to make my second third fourth feature going on to different series and all that so thank you thank you Vadim, for for coming on and thank you for tuning in uh 
Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click that bell. And as I will say every time, you don't need permission to create your vision. Now go make something. Peace.